The strobe light effect is found under the stylized category, and if I apply it to my logo, it's going to immediately fill it with white, and if I play, it's going to start blinking or strobing. Now I can change that strobe color to be whatever I want. So up at the top of the controls, I could change this to anything. So maybe I'll make it a golden yellow color. And now it's alternating between that filled version of the logo and the unaffected version. I could blend that with the original so it's not 100% filled, but just kind of a, a highlighted version. And maybe I'll choose something that's a bit more different from my yellow color, just so we can see how it's changing the colors a little bit more. So I can blend that more or less if I didn't want to fill it completely. I'm going to reset that all to default. Next up is the strobe duration and strobe period, which are both measured in seconds. So currently, if I play this back, every half second is when it strobes on and off. So the strobe duration is half of a second and the strobe period is one second, which means that it stays in this strobe state for a half a second and then turns off and then after one full second, it repeats the cycle. So the strobe period is how long it takes for that to cycle, and the strobe duration is actually how long it's not on this strobe state, so on the original state. Meaning if I turn this down to 0.25, then it's going to stay strobed for three quarters of a second, and then the last quarter of the second, it will be unstrobed. It's a little bit backwards of how I would think about it, but that's how it works. So if I wanted it to be this filled strobe state for a quarter second, I'd need to change this to 0.75, and then it will stay white for a quarter second and then unstrobed for the remainder of that second. So you can play around with these two values to come up with a strobe rate that you're happy with. And if you'd rather think about this in terms of frames rather than seconds, because that might be a little bit easier, we can actually write a very simple expression to convert these values into frames. So I'm just gonna alter option click on strobe duration, give myself some more room here so I can work on this expression and type in this comp with a capital C dot frame duration with a capital D times value and finish that off with a semicolon. So what this is doing is taking the value of one frame within this comp, which again is measured in seconds, and then multiplying it by whatever I type in here, which essentially allows me to type in however many frames I want this strobe duration to be, and then it will multiply it by the length of one frame measured in seconds. So if I click off, now I can type in one, and we're going to get a value equal to one frame measured in seconds. And that will work no matter what frame rate my comp is. So if I go to my composition settings and I change this to 30 frames per second, that value changes because the length of one frame has changed. So now if I play this back, there's one blink. It's only one frame long and it's happening one time a second. Now that's probably way too slow. Let's say 15 frames, which would be half of a second. And then we're going to get back to our original strobe rate. Now I could copy and paste this expression into the strobe period as well, and now both of these are gonna be measured in frames. So I could decide the strobe period should be, say, 10 frames, and the strobe duration should be five frames, and now we're gonna get a much faster blinking strobe. Now strobe lights are generally pretty fast, so if you're trying to get something really quick, I could change this down to maybe two and four, and now that's blinking really quickly. Let's make that a little bit faster, maybe eight and 16, just so we don't give ourselves a headache. And I actually wanna point out that if you turn the strobe period lower than the strobe duration, so let's say four for the strobe period and eight for the strobe duration, nothing happens. And that's just the way it works. You can't have the strobe period be less than the strobe duration. All right, let me undo and get back to our 16 frame strobe and take a look at random strobe probability. This is basically just a randomness slider for the strobing. So if I play this back now, you can see that it is much more random. If I turn it to a lower number, it won't be quite as intense, but it's basically just introducing some randomness. But with that property, you can generate some random flickering very easily. I didn't have to do anything other than increase that value. So think of like a fluorescent light that needs a new bulb. That's a lot easier than writing expressions or hand keyframing the opacity of a layer to generate the flicker. The next property is strobe operates on color only. That's the default, but we could say makes layer transparent instead. So instead of filling it with this color, it turns it on and off. So this is how you could actually get something to flicker by turning on and off. Now, unfortunately, it's either fully transparent or fully opaque. You can't get any in-between states. But if you wanted to have some of those semi-transparent versions, then you could just add a CC composite effect after strobe light uncheck RGB only, and then turn the opacity down, and now it will flicker between 100% opacity and whatever opacity you set right here. 
And if you wanted to take this even further, you could add an expression to that opacity and type in maybe a wiggle and say 15 for the frequency, so 15 times per second and we'll say 50% for the amplitude and finish it with a semicolon, meaning that this is going to wiggle 15 times a second by a value of 50%. And now we have wiggling values on that transparency. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that CC composite, change this back to operates on color only, and then take a look at strobe operator. This is set to copy, but we could change this to any one of these other blend modes. So if I change this back to maybe that magenta color, and change it from copy to add, it's going to blend that magenta on top of my layer now instead of just filling it. Or I could change it to subtract. Any one of these blend modes will work. And the last option we have is random seed, which will just randomize the strobe probability, giving us a unique seed to generate that randomness. This is definitely a fun little effect, and it's very useful as a foundation of making things flicker or blink with some very useful controls for making things randomized. But that's everything you need to know about the strobe light effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.